from Canada's Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics. Welcome to Perimeter Explorations. Now that we know how to calculate the mass of the Sun, let's see if we can calculate the masses of entire galaxies. A galaxy is a vast collection of stars, typically around 100 billion. In many galaxies, gravity makes stars orbit the centre of their galaxy, just like Jupiter orbits the Sun. Because of this, we can use the orbital method to find the mass of a galaxy within the radius of the orbit of any star we choose. To do this, we need to know the speed of the star and the radius of its orbit. Ever hear of the Doppler effect? It's what happens when an ambulance rushes past you and the sound you hear changes frequency. As it approaches you, the sound shifts to a higher frequency. As it moves away, it shifts to a lower frequency. When you measure the shift in frequency, you can determine the speed of the ambulance. It's the same with light. If a star is moving towards us, light shifts to higher frequencies, closer to the blue end of the spectrum. If the star is moving away, the light shifts to lower frequencies, closer to the red end. Since galaxies are really far away, we can't simply measure the speeds of stars by calculating distance over time. So the Doppler effect can be used to indirectly determine their speeds. The greater the shift in frequency, the faster the speed. Let's use the Doppler effect to help measure the mass of a nearby galaxy called Triangulum, which, like Andromeda, has stars orbiting at speeds higher than expected. Let's pick a star in the outer regions that's orbiting the center of the galaxy with a radius of 400 million billion kilometers. It turns out that the star in the outer regions of Triangulum is orbiting at 123 kilometers per second. Let's substitute those values for speed and radius into the galaxy mass formula. This huge number is equal to the mass of 46 billion suns. 46 billion suns. That's pretty bright. Let's use that brightness to confirm the mass of the galaxy. To start, we'll need a flashlight. If we know the mass of one flashlight, and its brightness, we can figure out the mass of a whole wall of identical flashlights. How? By measuring its total brightness. Let's call it the brightness method. It's another way to measure the mass of objects in outer space. It also helps us understand why Vera Rubin saw the stars in Andromeda moving so much faster than anyone expected. Once you've got the total brightness, compare it to the brightness of the single flashlight. The relationship between the brightness of all the flashlights and just one will tell you how many flashlights there are. Then, multiply the number of flashlights by the mass of one flashlight and you've got the total mass. We can use the brightness method to calculate the mass of the stars in a distant galaxy within a given radius. But there are a couple of problems. First, some galaxies are farther away than others. For example, Triangulum is farther away than Andromeda. Galaxies that are more distant appear less bright, even though they tend to emit the same amount of light as closer galaxies. But scientists know that, just like the brightness of a flashlight, the brightness of a galaxy decreases in a predictable way, based on distance. When a galaxy or a flashlight is farther away than another one, it only appears less bright. So scientists can determine the actual brightness of a galaxy if they know how far away it is. The second problem is that, unlike these flashlights, not all stars are identical. Fortunately, there's a relationship between a star's brightness and its mass 
that helps account for the different types of stars found in galaxies. Having solved the problem of unequal distance and accounted for different types of stars, physicists determined through the brightness method that the mass of Triangulum within a radius of 400 million billion kilometres equals 7 billion suns. But the orbital method gave us a mass of 46 billion suns. That's a difference of 39 billion suns worth of mass. Similar mass differences have been observed in over 1,000 galaxies. Something very, very strange is going on. But what? The brightness method assumes that all mass in a galaxy emits light. But the orbital method doesn't assume that. In fact, most of the mass in Triangulum measured by this method is unseen mass that emits no light. And because there's a relationship between mass and orbital speed, it's this extra mass that can explain the high speeds in Triangulum and in all other galaxies scientists have checked. Such as Andromeda, where Via Rubin observed orbital speeds far higher than expected. Most physicists are confident that Andromeda, like Triangulum, is dominated by unseen mass. And they think that this additional mass is responsible for the speed she saw. By looking at satellite galaxies and other distant objects, physicists now think that, in most galaxies, this unseen mass extends much farther than the outermost stars. In this image, we represent this mass by the pale blue shape. Because the unseen mass doesn't emit or reflect any light, it's known as dark matter. <laughs> 